Okay, hello again everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm testing out this new little uh, plug-in microphone with like a built-in wind muffler. As you can see, if you recognise that old World War II radar tower, you'll know where I am. I'm down at the East Tilbury again on the Thames Estuary. Coal House Fort is just that way. I'm parked down there. And I had planned to carry on along the footpath to Coal House Point where I've wild camped a few times and do a little video to celebrate reaching 5,000 subscribers and review a ration pack. Well, that's not going to quite happen according to plan because the footpath is closed. Apparently they've had some really, really high spring tides here. The tower is, is slowly becoming underwater actually and the point where we're going to has collapsed into the estuary. See the wind's picking up here, the tripod's moving all over the place. Um, yeah, the uh, it's, it's disappeared into the estuary basically. Um, they shut the Thames barrier up in London after some, uh, some heavy rain and, and high spring tides. And of course the water's got nowhere to go and it's flooded a lot of this area and wiped a lot of it out. So the old World War II jetty could have gone, the little peninsula that I usually camp on might have gone. So anyway, we might have to make do with falling back to over here to the heavy anti-aircraft battery, camping there instead. I'm joined unexpectedly by the lovely Candice. There she is. She's just come from work. Um, of course, she don't live too far from here. This is a childhood stomping ground, so I thought I'd invite her out. It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to get a shift on up to uh, the heavy anti-aircraft battery. I had planned to set a tarp up as well to sit under, but that, that ain't going to happen now because, well, I'm not really going to be allowed to do that there. They'll probably kick off at me, so... Um, but there's all the old buildings and the bunkers to sit in and we've got Cliff Fault just over here on the other side, the estuary, the Kent side. But yeah, today it's all about celebrating the 5,000 subs, thanking all of yous, cooking up this ration pack that I've not had before. You'll have to wait and see. We've got a cider and, well, if the mics allow me, tell you the plans for the channel going forwards. So, enough talking, let's get walking. So, I've got these little uh, microphones here. It's got the dead rat and cat thing on it. Um, got them off Amazon for less than a tenner, I think. I can't remember, and they're, they're pretty good. Plug into your phone. They're, uh, they seem to be working all right. It is windy today. Although it seemed the phone was always picking up wind, I noticed, I thought maybe it's a sign it's getting old. But yeah, it's always windy here, look, you can see how much it's flooding and stuff. Yeah. The Thames is really high at the moment. I'd hope to, to camp back at Coal House Point, uh, maybe like a day camp or maybe an overnighter with me a uh, tarp and bivvy. Um, that's not going to happen now, unfortunately, so, although to be fair, I've been to this location so many times and done quite a few videos on it now there's probably enough history about it on the channel somewhere so please do have a look back yeah it's been a quite a mental year this year 2019 um, I started the year on 3,000 subscribers I think I got about I got to 4,000 around April time that's that's absolutely mental four or five months to do that and then it's what it's october now and i've hit five thousand so yeah it's, it's picking up so i want to say a big thank you to all of you for subscribing for watching the channel um i've, I've started getting recognized well i've been recognized twice uh people that i I go camping and walking with have been recognised. Candice has been spotted a couple of times. Um, my mate Mark has been spotted as well. 
you're on Tom Outdoors videos, all that stuff. Uh, my mate Dan, Suffolk Dan, he went down to Cornwall with his other half a few weeks ago. They were on the beach and there was this guy wild camping and apparently uh, they, they started chatting and stuff and Dan was like, oh yeah, my mate's got a YouTube channel. Um, he's called Tom Outdoors. And the guy went, you're joking. He went, I subscribe to him and watch his stuff all the time. <laughs> so it goes to show like how word spreads and stuff. You, you think you're only reaching a small audience, but YouTube, you know, YouTube connects you with so many people all over the world. You know, Jason from Tasmania, uh, people from Australia. There's a couple of guys in Canada and America that watch. Uh, I had a French subscriber. I don't know if I've still got them or not. Anyways, yeah. So I want to say a big thank you to all of you. I know I always say it in every video, but I really do mean it. I'm not. I'm not bullshitting. Right, we've got to just get down this uh, this little ditch, which was probably part of the the gun battery. This is a heavy anti-aircraft gun battery, I believe. Um, it's, it's wet, you see, so we've got to be really, really careful. Take your time. And at whoa, <laughs> imagine 5,000 subs and one of us stacks it. <laughs> Hang on. That would be quite bad, then. Not if one of us ended up in A&E, it wouldn't be, but <laughs> I do want to try and wild camp in these, uh, these like pillbox things here. That would be really cool. Oh, yeah, look, there's the, the radar tower. And then here are the pillboxes and stuff. Me and Candy spent a day here as well once. There we go. Yeah. History. And because it's such a shit weather today, we probably won't get a lot of people bothering us. And then got all of these uh, steps and stuff. And look, you can see it's a pretty solid structure. It's cool. Right. Ah, oh, this is lovely. Home from home. It would be good to try and camp in, in one of these anyway. This hat's a bit too small for me. It looks like a, a Jewish skull cap. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I just... Uh, Yom Kippur. Is it called Yom Kippur? Like? No, it's not a fish. Oh. Kippur. Yom Kippur. Oh, sorry. Yom Kippur. You don't offend the Jews, okay? We're, oh, not, we're not going down that route. Oh, we're not going down. Oh. No, no. It's Yom Kippur, not Kippur. Kippur. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's a bit small. This at so, I'll give it a wash. It's the first time I've worn it. It's brand new. We're going to uh, get a chair and a table set up. Can't set a bloody tarp up now. Um, and I'll show you this ration pack that we've got. Thought we'd uh, grab a little drink to celebrate. So we've got an old moot cider, strawberry and pomegranate. Ripe you are then. And this one is a four percenter. I like the four percent ones. They seem to be the right kind of percentage and usually a bit sweeter. Cider blended with strawberry and pomegranate juice. This clever concoction mixes ripe strawberry and tart pomegranate for a taste to keep you on your toes. We love nature and we wouldn't craft our tasty cider without it, which is why we like to look after it. There we go. We'll be having that. Um, show you some other camera equipment. I also bought this uh, this little kind of filming light. Uh, I already had the little bendy gorilla tripod. I just fit it onto here. So brace yourself. Oh blimey! But you can turn it down and stuff. It's all different settings. Um, and then it's got a rechargeable battery in there that it come with or you can use normal batteries um, and it's got two different filters as well that you can put on like a yellow one or an orange one and this white one 
nice and compact, fits in your pocket, so I can use that as well, that didn't cost me a lot, but I thought I'll get all this stuff, invest some money in some, uh, some new camera equipment for the channel, once I've hit 5,000 subs, so there we go, you made all this happen everyone, <laughs> and I didn't even monetize. so we've got that, we've got the little dead rat microphone and we've got another microphone as well so both clip-ons uh, the tripod's got a new tripod that the phone's on at the moment I'll just quickly show you there we go so because I have a habit of breaking micro uh, microphones breaking tripods probably microphones and all to be honest with you just a little microphone there we've got the tray out for the ration pack yeah Right, anyways, stick this back on here. But didn't pay a hell of a lot for all this stuff, and yeah, it might not last. Who knows? We don't know. But it's cheap enough that I can just buy it again if need be. Anyways, right, I'm starving. Let's have a look, see what we're eating. Okay, apologies, everyone. So this is um, where. I hadn't plugged the microphone into the phone correctly and didn't know so I filmed the majority of the video with the microphone not plugged in correctly apologies for that lessons learned so the stove I'm going to be using on this video is the Vargo titanium hexagon wood stove I've had this years one of the first bits of kit I bought nice and lightweight uh, folds up as you can see and you can use solid fuel in it, you can put a little alcohol stove in it, of course you can use twigs, wood rubbish that you've got as fuel, and of course it's like a built in windshield as well, it's air flows underneath it nicely. I've also got the BCB Fire Dragon stove, and I've got some Van Gogh Bioethanol Green Gel fuel. This is cheaper than the Fire Dragon gel fuel. You get it in a big bag and you know it lasts a lot longer, it's a lot cheaper, does exactly the same thing. So there's some uh, tinder and wood wool that I've got. And just me pots. It's weird uh, having to commentate on your own video. It feels a bit weird. <laughs> so this is the ration pack. It's a Danish modular 24 hour ration pack I think I got this really cheap on eBay brand new I think it was something like 10 quid and yeah enough food for 24 hours lots of snacks it's got a little brown paper information thingy on it which is actually in English as well very useful and there's enough food in there for like breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks. The dinner uh, portion is lacking somewhat. It's a lot of biscuits and spreads, stuff like that. So I did include, uh, um, I think it was a, a vegetable korma and a, a ginger uh, pudding with ginger sauce. Just to sort of fill the, the, the meal out a bit and probably show you that a bit later in the video so first up we've got that vegetable korma that I just spoke of that's not part of this ration pack it's something I included it's from a British Army uh, rat pack as is the ginger sponge or ginger pudding and ginger sauce there we go, there it is. Um, it's not my favourite one, but it's not bad. I just thought that the ration pack needed something extra like that. So, next up, let's get into the the majority of it. What was it? It comes in this massive plastic bag, and then lots of separate bags. So it's not very kind on the environment, this one. So there's a, a lot of waste, so... Um, I will reuse all of these bags though, but yeah, a lot of, lot of rubbish accumulated from it, should we say. So, we're getting on to, yep, it's a giant bag, Tom. 
device is awful, sorry about this. I'll learn next time to plug the f microphone in properly. So this is our first breakfast. They're um, dehydrated uh, meals, very lightweight. Uh, that one, I don't know if that's the fruit muesli or the porridge. There's a, there's a, a fruit muesli and uh, a plain porridge as well. And these were both really nice. I really liked the fruit muesli. Very sweet. Lots of different dried fruit in it. Okay, next little bag are dextrose tablets. Keep your energy up. Just fast acting sugars. A bit like Lucas Aid tablets. Then we've got like a, a toothbrush. Which turned out to be a, a little weird spiky ball that tasted of toothpaste. That you sort of scrub your teeth with. Um, what's that? That's the matches that he came with, just normal matches. You've got quite a few though. And what is that? That's three different types of tea bag that we've got in there. And from what I remember, it was all well sealed up, it was really good. It's like a, a normal kind of tea, an English blend tea, which I didn't actually try in the end. There's a fruit tea, which I did try. That was all right. It's a bit bland. And a green tea. Lovely. Didn't try that, though. So you'll see those in future videos. So that's the teas. That's just a small portion of the hot drinks, by the way. Got a lot of hot drinks for this ration pack. So we've got some Mentos, Breeze, uh, sort of chewy mint sweets, sort of gum. In fact, they were chewing gum, yeah. A pack of tissues, standard as always, very useful. Then we've got a really good spork, like a plastic like my fire one, with like a knife, fork, spoon, all in one. And that's pretty good for a ration pack, I was quite surprised by that, so that was not bad. What am I showing you now? There's a couple of toothpicks, and butter fingers. We have got, that looks like sugar. I know it come with a lot of sugars, a lot of uh, creamers for the coffee as well. So that's kind of all the condiments. There's a hell of a lot of stuff in this ration pack. You, you got a lot for your money, definitely. So next little bag, we've got some brown biscuits. So like savoury sort of biscuits, almost like a cracker. Or oat cakes, sort of similar to that. Very similar to the British Army ones, so they were really nice. That is like a, a I think it's a beef bouillon kind of soup, kind of like a beef soup or a vegetable soup. There's two different soups in this one, just a powder soup. And then that I think is a tuna pate, which I hated. Candice didn't mind it. And. Next up, we're going back to the tuna pate. I had to check it first, and it was tuna. Candice found this hilarious, because she knows how much I hate tuna. I did try a little bit of it, I think, and it, it was awful. Just the smell, yeah. Yeah, not a fan. But, you know, Candice didn't mind it. She tried a bit of it. Yeah. I think overall she wasn't a massive fan of the ration pack though. I mean she's, bless her, she's not a fan of the ration packs in general. She's not as obsessed about them as I am. <laughs> I think that might be the Mediterranean one. It was like a Mediterranean tomato pate. That is a hot chocolate powder. Really big hot chocolate powder. You've got a lot in it. Really nice as well. Probably full of sugar and maltodextrin. <laughs> We have another bag. I think it's more condiments again. What is that? That looks like the spice mix. There was like a, a herby spice mix that I never used. So I've still got that. Uh, there was just so much stuff. I've run out of time in the end to actually... And water. That's the vegetable soup powder, I think. Yeah, there was so much in it. I actually ran out of water to use. I used about two and a half three liters of water then they they were um, like sweetened peanuts 
They're really nice. Another hot chocolate powder, I think that is. And um, that was like a another spice mix. I can't remember what it was. Like a chili powder, which I've kept. Sambal it was called, I think. And and what is that? That's one of the coffees, an instant coffee powder. Uh, some salt, I think that was. I think it was coffee creamer. I think that's the pepper. So you've got a lot of condiments with it. Uh, that's an Ardennes pate. That was quite nice. That wasn't too bad. Another sugar. Probably went with the coffee. So I tried to sort of bag this up into into individual meals and stuff just to make it easier for when I'm outside you know rather than having to sit and put stuff together so next bag we've got <coughs> is uh, two packs of fruit biscuits kind of like Gary Baldy biscuits and you get something very similar in British Army wrap packs and they are amazing I absolutely love them then that's an, an iced tea powder. I know one of them was forest fruits and one of them was cranberry flavour. So I don't know which one this is. Oh, there we go. Cranberry flavour, there we go. And the next one will be forest fruits. They both tasted really nice, to be fair. Um, that's a, a cherry jam, which we used on the, the fruit biscuits the Gary Baldy style biscuits wasn't too bad bit lumpy um, probably another sugar I don't know what it was apologies uh, is that a coffee I think that's a coffee I've put in there creamer more more sugar <laughs> it seems as I say a lot of stuff to put in hot drinks um, conformism rules okay I didn't plan to sit with that behind me by the way anyways yeah I said look at it so far I think that was all of it so yeah let's get snacking <laughs> what an idiot okay so I've made up the hot chocolate and a coffee I mixed them together just to sort of save the water really and that was a that was really tasty that um the coffee weren't too overpowering as you can see i've got the vargo wood stove going i think i put some solid fuel tablets and some of that wood wall in it and it's yeah i had to use the the windshield still because just the wind was coming in through the open door of the bunker and just like blowing it everywhere and you see it's a bit wild there at the moment but it's a good little stove though definitely use it again probably use it on more like woodland wild camps it always works well and there we go that's I think that's the vegetable soup I'm gonna make that up and like dunk some some of the brown biscuits in it and stuff and um, we've made a start on those sweetened peanuts they were good and then that is that's the fruit muesli all mixed up um, wasn't a massive portion in there it wasn't a hell of a lot but it, it was just right it was, it was pretty good actually um, and it mixed up really well I think I put maybe a little bit more water in than I should have done it didn't have a fill level line on it so I had to sort of guess it a bit and yeah it tasted really good out of the two I think I preferred that but the porridge was still really nice. I think you'd probably just have to add stuff to the porridge, mix it up a little bit and add something to it. And yeah, good sort of good variety of fruit in the in the fruit muesli. I really liked that. I think there was like papaya, banana, mango, apricot. It was sort of a very tropical kind of uh fruit muesli, should we say, which is one of my favourites anyway, so yeah, it went down really well. We've got the fruit biscuits coming up. And you, you can't go wrong with those really. You know, you can put jam on them. 
they're great to dunk in you know a hot drink um I could have them on every single camp. I absolutely love them. They're brilliant. Full of rubbish, but... They'll keep you going. Lots of energy. And they survived mostly intact. From what I believe, we'll soon find out anyway when I get them out on the tray. I don't always bring that tray out. It uh, comes out for special occasions for when I'm reviewing a ration pack. Here we go. How broken are they? Not too bad. But yeah, just exactly the same as the British Army ones, if you've had them before. Um, really, really tasty biscuits. I can't fault them. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the the cherry jam. And it was a bit watery. It's sort of all separated. It was very, very jelly-like. But it wasn't too bad. It was a bit difficult to spread it, so I just kind of dunked the the fruit biscuits in it I think and yeah as a result got a lot of the juice yeah on my hands but it's quite nice very dark looking but it was nice just added some extra to it looking back on it I probably could have used that in the the porridge so the porridge was plain probably would have gone down much nicer actually like that but you live and learn <laughs> haven't seen any of these danish ration packs again since i've been on ebay so this will probably be the only one i ever do um do of the danish ones but i thought i'll keep it for this video and yep you've got to dunk them in there it's a very thick hot chocolate and coffee or mocha very very thick i mean look at it it's like painted the uh the crackers or the biscuits should we say and this was lovely perfect sort of food for winter you can't go wrong with that can you yeah and it looks like we've got a boil on on the stove oh it's so weird commentate in your own videos i'm not a fan of this um yeah like i say i'll remember to do it properly next time i hadn't plugged the microphone in all the way i thought i had and it was just a little bit more i just pushed the, the microphone jack in a little bit more and it would have worked okay next up i think we're trying uh one of the iced tea beverage powders out so i'm just putting a little bit of water in the bottle just because i didn't have a a lot left as I say used up a hell of a lot of water this this ration pack so I can't remember what flavor this one was I'm afraid Um, I remember Candice chose the flavor in fact yeah sorry it was forest fruits she wanted to try that one out first and it, it did look a little bit like dehydrated piss I'm not gonna lie but I suppose that's the colour of most iced tea. And it wasn't bad. I'm not normally a fan of iced teas. But this was. This was alright. Yep. Good thing I put the lid on tight. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't too bad. It just tasted like a normal. Powdered drink really. That you'd get. In a ration pack. I wouldn't say. It stood out really as an iced tea or anything. It was nice. I mean, my face sort of screwing up makes it look like I don't like it. But reflecting on it, it was quite nice, actually. Yeah. And, of course, you probably put a bit more water in it. There we go. Candice is trying a bit. She chose that one. She didn't look too happy about trying that. I think she thought it was all right. No, she's not a fan, bless her. Look at her little face. It was a pleasant surprise, her turning up. She finished work early and she didn't have anything else to do. And I went, well, come down here and hang out with me in a bunker <laughs> on a rainy day, as you do. But now we have a great time together, bless her. She stands by me as well, puts up with all of this nonsense with YouTube and stuff. Right, I think this is, it could be the porridge yeah, that's, this is the instant porridge. So it's plain. 
So, I mean, it depends. If you, I mean, it doesn't taste too bad on its own. As plain porridge goes, it's it's quite tasty. But if you're like me and you like a, you know, sort of a, a bit of a taste to your porridge, you know, a flavour, you could always chuck something in it. Maybe, you know, chuck some nuts, seeds, some dried fruit, stuff like that in it. Or add some honey. Yeah, so the, the breakfast portion of this ration pack is super filling. I mean, there's, you know, two two breakfasts i mean you could essentially spread it out longer than 24 hours if you think about it it was just the uh kind of like the 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 lunch and the the dinners were a bit naff really they could do with kind of could do with like more hot hot meals and stuff meals you know you can cook up and stuff Okay, I think this is either the beef or vegetable uh, soup. It's basically like a, an instant soup, like a cup of soup almost. And it had loads of like croutons and bits floating in it as well. Might have been the vegetable one actually. They were okay. I mean, sort of the, they were very kind of thin thin sort of soups really and I mean I didn't put a lot of water in them and that's a 400ml mug so I've got the brown biscuits so you could dunk those in it sort of add sort of something extra to it a bit and they went okay with it but I think the soups were a bit too watery they weren't really suitable for like dunking stuff in but I mean in a pinch though I would still happily drink them you know they were okay so I will reuse those bags because they're really useful for all kinds of stuff. I, I don't really use dry bags that much. I just tend to use Ziploc bags, bags from ration packs. Um, and yeah, they seem to do the trick. Saves me quite a bit of money. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about at the moment. Probably talking about the fact that I was not feeling very well. I am just getting over laryngitis as well, by the way. Um, so probably doing all this talking is not helping massively, but it's got to be done. Um, yeah, sort of the the week after this video was filmed, I've just lost my voice. I take time off work, cancel clients. I not a good week. I mean, it was good to have a you know a break from going out and filming and doing stuff, and I you know I've just been editing, getting videos like this sorted out and just starting to feel better now so um, just in time for Halloween <laughs> so yeah it's uh, not been the best of weeks really I've had two weeks out I don't know what pate that is as soon as it's not the tuna one it could be I think that's the Ardennes pate yeah which of the three I thought was the best one but that's just a personal preference because I like Ardennes pate it was okay this one though, but it was a bit, it had straw inside it, it was, it, it was weird, it wasn't very smooth, um, and it was a bit clumpy as well, once you started trying to spread it and stuff, it was very clumpy, and... So I thought rather than try and spread it, I just thought just dunk it in there, yep, the smell was a bit grim. Apologies for the table manners, everyone. It was a bit dry. It wasn't the best Ardennes pate ever. Um, yeah, we didn't get a lot of it either. Really, for the amount of uh, crackers and biscuits they give you, you never really get enough jam. Or... I suppose there was a lot of pâtés actually, but I don't know. You probably still couldn't have got all of all of that onto the the brown biscuits. They could have done more brown biscuits and maybe one less pack of fruit biscuits.
So we're going to have a look at the Dextro tablets now. So these were, I suppose, part of a snack. And they're just like white, chalky little tablets. And we're very chalky and dry. But then that's Dextrose tablets for you. Um, like I say, if you've had Lucasaid Dextrose tablets, they're almost exactly the same. Same sort of flavour. It's like a slight orange flavour to them. I, I quite like them. Um, you're meant to spread them out, of course, throughout the day. I could probably sit and eat a pack of those in one go, which is not good because all that sugar and energy, you want to just spread it out. But quite a useful little thing you know deck shows if you're not aware um, it's a fast acting sugar so it's absorbed really quickly into the body um, you get a lot of it in like a, you know like pre-workout powders for the gym and stuff like that and sort of um, energy drinks like drinks that you drink you know during a workout or exercise and yeah the body just absorbs it really quickly and you know it sort of processes it really quick I mean sort of similar I suppose in a way to like jelly babies stuff like that fruit pastels really just quick energy I had to be careful not to let Candice have too many of them because of course she's she's got diabetes so um, I think she liked them quite a bit bless her so right we're having the fruit tea next this was quite disappointing it didn't really have um, a very strong taste or smell of fruit in it I can't remember what fruits were in it I think it was a lot of red berries and stuff but it was very bland very watery tasting and just non-existent I did put it in a mug that had I think remnants of like the beef or vegetable soup in it so that sort of did taint the taste a little bit but even so, it just still had no fruit flavour whatsoever. So it wasn't the best tea, but you know, in a pinch, I'd drink it again, as I said. So this was the fruit tea that I'm just about to taste. And yep, the look on my face says it all. Look, there's just not enough flavour in it. Very red, so there was a lot of red fruits, um, strawberries. I think there was apple, like red apples. I think there was even banana or something in it. Like I know there was strawberries, cherries, like raspberries. Um, I think there might have been blueberries. It was uh, quite a mixture, but it just it just didn't have any taste to it really it was very cheap tasting um, and I think the like the beef soup I had before in the cup and I didn't have enough water to wash it out with probably didn't help Candice going to try it and she went yeah it's just beef yeah <laughs> look at her little face bless her she's adorable she went you can just taste beef in it <laughs> That face said it was like, do not ever make me a cup of tea again, Tom. Bless her. Yeah, I was trying to keep her interested with this. I don't think she was too interested in it, really. But um, the vegetable corn, though, she did like. Right, the next thing we're having a look at is the Mediterranean Groton Pate. So this was like a Mediterranean tomato-style sort of pate. It did look a bit like baby sick, I'm not going to lie. Very spicy and hot smelling. If you can smell heat, I don't know, but do you know what I mean? It was a very spicy smell and stuff. Look, she's really interested in this. She didn't mind this one. Yeah, see? Yeah, Candy set a bit of that. I had a bit and it was, mm, was alright. I don't have a lot of luck with these. Oh. It does look a bit like baby sick. Yep, yeah, the face. Why do I do this? Look, I, I got a, a big bit there. I probably shouldn't have got that much. No, put some back. <laughs> oh. 
Go on, just eat it. Go on. Go on, just put it in your mouth. As an actor said to a bishop. Oh. That wasn't great. Oh. Candice wanted some. Bless her. <laughs> Be coming up to our two year anniversary, by the way. Uh, in November. She's going to kill me for not remembering the exact date, but it's in the diary. So, yeah, so you'll probably see a, f a few videos of just the two of us. And, yep, good. I needed the cider to wash that down with. It was a good cider, that actually. I've had that a few times before. Can't go wrong with the old moot ciders or old mout, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I don't think Candice wanted any more of that, Pat A. She was. I thought it was all right, but I think she was looking forward to the calma really the most. <laughs> so I switched over to the BCB Fire Dragon stove now, just to conserve my Esbit tablets. So they're not that cheap, really. So we've just been boiling up the vegetable korma on the BCB stove. And that was piping hot. That was probably the nicest thing that we ate of the whole day and it wasn't even in the ration pack. Although, to be fair to the, the Danish one, the breakfasts were good, the hot chocolates were good, um, the iced tea drinks were good, the biscuits were good, the jam was good. Pâtés weren't great. Um, all the little sweets and snacks were good. The condiments were good. And there we go. That's the vegetable korma out there on the tray. I think it was in a, like a mild coconut sauce. Something like that. So me and Candy sort of shared that. Um, bless her. She'd not really had a lot to eat that day. So she'd come from work. She needed a hot meal. She was getting a bit peckish. So... I was a gentleman and I let her eat the majority of it. I had a few bits, but I was like, mainly, you need to eat. So, yeah, no, that was, that was alright. That, we've had that before. She's inquiring, look, <laughs> here we go. Bless her, look at, she's got a grin on her face. She's genuinely happy about it. So I think she's had it before. <laughs> Sounds weird, but I could watch her eat for hours. She loves food. Absolutely loves food. She's always good for dates. Because I like to eat a lot of food. Probably too much food. She's trying to save me some bless her. Look. She's so thoughtful. But. Uh, I think yeah. Her, her verdict on it. As I say apologies. You know, the microphone's not. I couldn't. Well we didn't plug it in properly. Um, she absolutely loved it. She was like that's. One of the best things we've eaten the whole day, I think, was the best thing for her. And yeah, overall, yeah, bet she's back for more. <laughs> she does like a korma. Don't think we had the... No, we didn't have the ginger pudding and ginger sauce in the end. What is that? It's another hot chocolate I'm doing. So yeah, they were really good. The coffees and the hot chocolates were, were brilliant in the ration packs. The teas, well I've only had one of them, um, I don't know what the other two are going to be like yet, but the fruit tea, yeah, wasn't the best unfortunately. Well, um, I'm not using the microphone at the moment on this, on this segment, we just realised that pretty much all the footage that I've just filmed prior to getting here to this bunker I used the microphone on um, thinking it was plugged in, thinking we'd get better audio and it turns out the phone case that I've got the phone in that protects it um, wasn't allowing that plug to be pushed all the way in so as a result we had no audio um, I thought it was the microphone's fault or the phone thought it wasn't, it was my fault 
for being stupid as usual and not checking it. So I've got a lot to learn with using things like this, but that does work though really well. So I use it more. What I've done is I've cut a section of the phone case out so that you can get the jack, the, the jack plug all the way in. Anyway, we've more or less eaten everything in the ration pack. Candice has had the vegetable corn. She's got had a hot meal now because uh, she hadn't eaten a lot today. So yeah, I'm about you. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Um, we just got some some biscuits and crackers and some of the jam left. So we're going to finish that off. Um, so overall, concluding the ration pack, I liked the breakfast. They were very good. They were very filling. Lot to eat. Uh, the hot drinks were really good. The fruit tea was a bit, a bit a bit bland. I haven't had the other teas yet. I don't think I'm going to have time or, well, I haven't got enough water anyway. I've literally got about that much water left. Um, and that's for a, like a cold drink. I've done two litres of water. So it uses a lot of water up this ration pack, actually. Um, you know, you really, to be on the safe side, you need like three litres of water. However, there's so many drinks. I'd say you actually need more like four litres. Honestly, just to, it's ridiculous. It's a lot, but it's good. For what you get is good quality stuff. Like the biscuits, the dextrose tablets, the teas, the coffees, the hot chocolates were amazing. The jam's good. Excuse me. We've still got the uh, the toothbrush thing. That's going to be interesting. I kind of want to. Uh, let's crack it out now. Let's crack that out now. We've got toothpicks. We've got a spice mix. We're not going to have time for. I had some of the Mentos gum. That's really nice. That I like that. Um, still got coffee, sugar, salt, pepper the spicy red chilli sauce um, yeah we have still got quite a few little bits so it's a lot of stuff there and that I say served me for another ration pack still got my ginger pudding and ginger sauce from well something I added in anyway um, you know and the spork you get you could get a few a few goes out of that really didn't melt as well when I was you know, stirring the boiling water and stuff. So let's try out this Rolly or Rolly. Okay. Oh, and that's a toothbrush. I don't quite get how this is meant to work. It's it's a tiny little bristly sort of disc. I don't know what you're meant to clip it onto. Oh, hang on. I think you chew it and you just move it around your mouth. It's got a minty, fluoride sort of taste to it. I don't know if maybe you just use your fingers and like move it along your teeth. I guess so. It could just give you a toothbrush, a small toothbrush for or the dental gum. Maybe you've got to use it in conjunction with the dental gum. I don't know. It doesn't say to to do that because it tastes like it's got stuff in it already. I'm probably doing this completely wrong. If anyone knows, get in the comments. I don't know. But whatever it is, they've given you that, the chewing gum, and the toothpicks. So dental hygiene and stuff, they're really big on with these, which is good. Something different. Not playing around with that bollocks. It was quite good anyway. So... Um, yeah, that was a little look at the, the ration pack. Plans for the channel then. Lots of walking. Um, still going to be history included. So I want to do a lot more long distance walking. 
Uh, I've been looking at long distance routes sort of within the southeast of England. So the first one that I really want to do next year is the Ridgeway from Avery Stone Circle in Wiltshire uh, to Ivinghoe Beacon Hillfall um, in the Chilterns in Buckinghamshire where I wild camped on my own recently. That was really good there. So there's lots of history along that, lots of hill forts. Um, there's like long barrows, chambered tombs, uh, chalk hill figures and carvings, all sorts of cool stuff like that. So you could like almost wild camp on a different hill fort each night. Now it's about 87 miles, I believe. I'm not going to do it in one go. I'm going to split it into two trips each trip consisting of about three or four days of walking and wild camping just because of work really i can't commit to doing a long distance route for a lengthy amount of time and get that amount of time off work where i'm kind of like self-employed and also employed it's difficult you can lose clients if you have too long off work so i have to have to just sort of do it as and when i can so yeah, the Ridgeway I want to do. Um, well, is it the South Downs Way? I've been looking at that. Once again, I'll do multiple trips of it, but they're not going to be like day trips. they because that's a waste of my time driving all the way down or traveling all the way down there just to do a day and then buggering off back home. I'm going to do once again split it into two, maybe three, sort of three four day trips. Of walking and wild camping or camping in campsites or people's gardens pub gardens whatever um, so yeah I want to do that I want to do Winchester to Eastbourne rather than Eastbourne to Winchester so that's on the cars that's about 100 miles the North Downs way I don't see too many people doing that one a lot of South Down way um, seems to get done and I just thought we'll be different let's try the North Downs so want to do that at some point that's a lot further though it's nearly double the distance uh, Farnham in Surrey across Surrey uh, through Kent across Kent down to Dover and when you get to a certain point in Kent can't remember where it is exactly <coughs> the North Downs way has two different routes you can go north and go through Canterbury which would be cool with the history there. And I've not been to Canterbury yet, as of this video. North to Canterbury and then head south down to Dover. Or you can just head south straight away, go through Wye, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of cool stuff along there. Um, and get to Dover that way. And you sort of walk along more of the coast, like Folkestone and stuff. So I've got two choices. I might well do both routes so I'll sort of do like one video where, you know, I do one way to Dover and another video where I do the ending the other way, just because I want to do that. So North Downs Way, once again, I'll split it up into multiple um, trips of like three days, four days, that sort of thing. Kent Coast. The Kent Coastline, right, this is the big project, people. So... I mentioned a few videos back I did I've done the entire East Anglian coast now from the wash at Hunstanton in Norfolk all the way around to round about here Tilbury in Essex on the Thames Estuary so I've done uh, the North Norfolk coast path the Norfolk coast path the Suffolk coast path the Store and Orwell uh, walkway path um, the Essex way the pretty much the entire Essex coast where I've done day walks and camps and stuff along that I've walked the Essex coastline I've done the Thames estuary path uh, which starts at Tilbury finishes at Leon Sea done that I want to do that again actually I want to take Candy Can Candice <laughs> Candy <laughs> I want to take Candice on that one yeah. Because that's sort of close to her home and stuff, and it'd be her first like little long distance route. It's not too challenging, you know. We could knock it out in about two or three days. Yeah. 
with a couple of wild camps. So that's a good one to do. Um, but yeah, I've done that anyway. So now <coughs> I'll be looking at doing um, the southeast England section of the England Coast Path, which is the Wash at Hunstanton all the way to Southampton on the south coast of England. So I've done a vast chunk of it, of course. Now I'm round at Tilbury sort of thing, Dartford. So now I've got to hop over the river to Kent and do the Kent coastline. So that's, I know the Saxon Shore Way is 168 miles, I believe. I'm going to be following bits of it, but I'm also going to be following bits of the England coast path and, and then also my own route as well. That is going to be a long route. That's going to be a lot of multiple day trips um, and some single day trips as well. Like the first bit, Dartford to Gravesend, about 13 miles. Knock that out in a day. And then after that, it'll be like Gravesend to Rochester, circumnavigating the Hoo Peninsula, which is barren. There is no place, there's not a lot of opportunities to get water. Um, there's just not a lot there really. Plenty of places to wild camp, but just there's not a lot there. And it's quite a long way as I've looked up on the, the map and stuff. If you follow it as the crow flies, sort of going all the way around the peninsula. Uh, then it's Rochester up to the Isle of Sheppey and circumnavigating the Isle of Sheppey, coming off of the Isle of Sheppey round to Whitstable there that could be two trips that section as it is it, it, it's a long way it's a lot involved with that then Whitstable to Deal I think I'm doing and then we've got like Deal to sort of Dover or Dimchurch and then Dimchurch uh, past Dungeness all the way round to Camber Sands um, which is with the, the border of Kent and East Sussex. So I want to get that all that done first. Then we're looking at doing from what was it, Camp Sands to Southampton. So sort of east and west Sussex coastline. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot planned. I've got I've given myself a, a big challenge there with that one, but that's what I want to do. Um, more walking, more wild camping. Of course, I'm not going to be able to do that every single weekend, the long distance stuff. So I'll still be doing little circular day walks from the many guidebooks that I've got. Um, I've worked out I've probably got enough walks in those that probably keep me busy for about 10, 15 years, seriously. Most of the books have got like between 20 and 50 walks in. So 52 weeks in a year, if I did a walk a weekend, which is pretty manageable, that's quite easy to do, some of them are really short. Um, you know, you could average sort of doing like one, maybe two books a year sort of thing. You can see what I mean, I'm not gonna run out of content anytime soon, so don't worry. You know, I'm not gonna be like filming me going to the petrol station to get a bottle of LucasAid or something, you know content you know like it seriously there'll always be walks history camping and i'm, I'm just going to try and stick to really the southeast of england because you know i'm from here i'm proud of being from here mm. i think it's the greatest place on earth <laughs> essex till i die yeah I, i'm proud of here so i i, I don't want to go to dartmoor and stuff. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's nice there and stuff, but everyone else is doing that on YouTube. That's not what Tom Outdoors is about. It's about doing your own thing, where you're from, being proud of where you're from. I'm champion I'm championing championing this this area. I think it's good. I think you can have adventures here, you can wild camp, you can walk, there's history, you can explore stuff. It's got it all. I think it's good. You know, there are some hills We've got coastlines, rivers, woodland. We've got it. So, like, I, I really want to do more of that stuff. 
really. I have no real interest to go anywhere else in the country. You could say that's blinkered, but this is this is my mission, is to explore as much of this corner of the country as I can. I want to be able to point at the map and go, I've explored all of that, I've done all of that. I don't care if I've never been to the Lake District or anything. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to go, I've done that. That southeast corner of the country, that's a big chunk of land, that. I've walked that entire coastline, you know, I've seen its perimeter. That's what I want to do. Anyway, that's that's the that's the five year plan, you know. Oh, the hill forts. Oh, and hill forts. Yes, yeah, sorry. Right. All the hill forts we've done. Preparation we, for the big ones. We we want to do more hill forts, of course. Candice really wants to go to Herefordshire, to British Camp or the Herefordshire Beacon in the Malvern Hills. It's about three or four hours drive from here and it's it's definitely the highest hill fault in britain i think it might even be the highest hill fault in europe or one of the highest it is massive it's a multi valate hill fault so it's got loads and loads of ditches and ramparts yeah it's like a small mountain it looks like <laughs> Um, there's the remains of a Norman Mott Bailey Castle, its summit near the Trig Point. Uh, it was used as a signalling station. There's a cave, there's a temple of yeah. some kind up there, or like ru ruins of it or even footings of it. Anyway, we want to get up there, we want to camp up there. Um, because of the driving, it's going to be a three or four day trip that really, yeah. just to do that one. That would be pretty good. We want to do Danebury Hill Fall, Maiden Castle in Dorset, so a little bit further afield in terms of the hill faults, but yeah, yeah there we want. There's actually um, British Camp, there's an actual, not far from there, there's a sister hill fault to that as well. Is there? Yeah, not there. Oh, blimey, okay, so we've got, <laughs> yeah, so we've got more hill faults <laughs> to do, okay. Um, apart from that though, yeah, lots of walking. More wild camping. I know what I want to do. I'm going to stick to it. My vision is clear. That's it, really. And I ain't going to let anyone get in the way of that. So if you like it, come along. If you don't like it, don't come along. That's fine. You know, if you dislike the videos as well, that don't matter. Because apparently there's a thing called algorithms and it all adds to views and success for my channel. So you won't win. I will get to the top one way or another really I just that's it I'm not making videos for you I'm making videos for me stuff that I enjoy doing and stuff it's a bit like memories looking back on memories it's memories yeah I'm making memories that's that's what I'm doing I'm making memories so I can look back and go Kai that was brilliant I remember when we did that that was so much fun and stuff like that the fact that you get to watch it is an added bonus okay that's how I think YouTube should be you know you don't make stuff for other people to it is entertainment i know but you don't do it solely to entertain people otherwise if i was if i was going to go down that route i'd be doing bushcraft i'd be doing gear reviews um you know tips on how to do this how to make a fire how to do all this stuff things like that that does not interest me at all okay um you know going to the same places all the time same woodlands eating the same things, you know, product reviews, it, to me that is just, I'm not saying it's selling out, it's, it, it's a compromise, I'm, yeah, I'm just not interested in it, full stop. But I want to say a big thank you to the people that have stuck with me, that, yeah. you know, enjoy the channel, it's brilliant, it, it's just inconceivable to think that we'd be in this position, yeah. having to do a 5,000 subscribers video, um, you know, I still couldn't believe I passed a thousand, so it's, it's, it's gone a bit crazy now, and uh, yeah, like, but I've got the bug for it now, and I enjoy doing it, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to keep doing this, I found a purpose in life, something I enjoy doing and want to do. Yeah, thank you for commenting, leaving all the nice comments and stuff. I'm glad I've inspired people as well. Um, like Jason from Tasmania who's like lost half his body weight who else I mean there are people that like sit down to watch these videos I think that's crazy like in a good way I mean in a good way 
And but potentially subscribers as well. Yeah, and that. Become friends. Exactly. So it's gone from subscribers to sort of yeah good friends that I camp with and stuff and I think that's how it should be I don't like these big channels that they won't meet up with subscribers unless they have like a channel or they can help them in any way get more publicity you know they go oh if I appear on your channel you appear on my channel uh, we'll get more views and subs together and stuff and I think that's bollocks that's so that's quite nasty really um, whereas like, not to be rude, like me meeting up with someone that hasn't got a channel and stuff and things like that, yeah, okay, it's not going to promote my channel, but I don't care about that, it's fine. I want to meet my subscribers, almost like thanking them personally in a way, and get to share this with them and stuff as well. And you know, like Mark, Mark the Posty, he loves it. Yeah. It's great fun, he's been spotted as well while he's on the rounds um, at work. People have gone, you've been on Tom Outdoors channel and stuff like that. And, inspired people to start up channels as well. Uh, my mate James, Ben, London Outdoors, uh, Hardy, to a degree, I think Hardy had started filming anyway. So yeah, I'm grateful for that and it's really good to see their channels blossoming and taking off and they put out some really good stuff. The video didn't quite go the way I wanted it to on account of the footpath being closed, I wanted to go down there. Although to be honest with you, it's been quite nice being able to sit in here. Um, you know, out of the wind, we had a bit of rain. Apologies for the microphone. This is all a work in progress, all of this new camera equipment. And like, that's what I wanted to do, was test it out today with this video. So, right, uh, that was a look at this Danish ration pack. I've been Tom, Candice has been Candice. Big thank you everyone for watching. And yeah, as always, continue to get out there and explore, okay? I don't want you just to um, live that lifestyle through my videos and stuff. I want you to get out there and give it a go yourselves and stuff. The more people we've got doing this, like in a good way, the better, I think. Yeah. You know, like sort of build a bit of a community, not a clicky community, but just get people out there doing stuff. Like the benefits of an outdoors lifestyle is so good for you, like both mentally and physically. I can't express that enough, really. I can't stress that enough. It's just, it's just brilliant, you know. Um, and yeah, I may sound like some like crazy like obsessive like a person that just loves sleeping outdoors and walking and stuff but honestly once you give it a try you see what I mean so just give it a go you know a little wild camp that's what I want to do as well with subscribers people that have not wild camped before you know contact me if you want to get into it you know try out your first wild camp go with someone who knows what they're doing um, or, has, or has at least done it before and stuff you know, get in contact, we can sort stuff out. Yeah. Anyways, so please continue to get out and explore. Thank you for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe, get out there and explore. See you soon. Bye. Bye. That was a lot, wasn't it? <laughs>